Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2007 Nissan 350Z HR. Up front is a 3.5 liter V6 and down below is a six speed manual transmission. Now I'm super excited to be driving this here 350Z because it is an HR. HR meaning high revving. So in 2003 to 2004, you got the Nissan 350Z DE, which was just the standard V6. Then 2005 and 2006, we had the rev up edition, which was a slightly higher revving V6, made a little bit more power. And then for 2007 and 2008, we got the HR meaning high revving and that is what this car is. So I'm excited to share that with you guys. But let's get back to that 3.5 liter V6 under the hood. Like I said, it's high revving and I'll put the stock horsepower and torque up on the screen. Now this car's only modifications are a test pipe and down pipe, but the actual mufflers are stock, which is really nice and it gives the car a nice sound. VQ engines, which this is a VQ 35 engine, typically don't sound amazing when they have aftermarket exhausts on them, but this car actually does sound good, which is really, really nice. <laughs> wow, I am very impressed with that. When you let the car do its thing, it will definitely do its thing. And it sounds good, it revs to 7,500 RPM, and a V6 is fantastic. Great noise, great feel, great, ah, just everything. HR is really the 350Z to get. If you can't get your hands on a Nismo, which most people can't, this is the next best thing and I love it. Like I said, paired to its six speed manual transmission and I love the feeling of it. It's very, very notchy. It's very satisfying when it goes into gear. However, this is actually not the CD009. This is the CD00A, which has an internal slave cylinder as opposed to an external slave cylinder. And it's not the famed CD09 that everyone's so hyped up on, but still a very good transmission. Clutch engagement is nice and easy and light as well as it's satisfying. It's not overly light like some modern manual cars. Last but not least about the 350Z is of course it is rear wheel drive. But before we go any further, if you're looking for parts for your Z car, please check out Xenon Z car. They'll be linked in the description below. They have everything from vintage Zs, Z31, Z32, Z33, and Z34. It is your one-stop shop for everything Z. The owner, Joseph, is absolutely awesome. He's super knowledgeable about the cars, about the Z chassis. So click the link in the description below and visit the best spot for Z parts and Z information online. So let's talk about the interior. We have some interesting parts to talk about. Well, in front of me, I have three main gauge pods. On the left is my fuel and coolant temperature. Then I have the center mounted tachometer. Absolutely love this. I think every performance oriented car should have a center mounted tachometer. All the good ones do. What immediately comes to mind is Porsches having a center mounted tachometer and that's as sporty as you can get. Then on the right, I have my speedometer and odometer. On the steering wheel, I actually don't get any buttons and I kind of like this. It reinforces the sort of driver orientedness of these cars. These are driver's cars. These are meant to be driven, meant to have fun in. And I think that's very clear by not only the steering wheel, but the gauges, which we'll talk about later. To the left of me, I have a vent that's on the door, again, angled towards me, because it's all about me with the 350Z. And then down below, way down below, I have lock and unlock and my power windows. Moving into the center, these are the gauges I was talking about. I have MPG and average miles per hour, oil pressure and voltage and it's all angled towards me. This is very typical of older 280Zs, Nissan 300ZXs had these. And so this is a staple of Z cars. This is one of the most important features of a Z car are these three gauges in the center. Every Z has had them and I'm glad that they're still here in the 350. Then I get this giant storage container in the center 
I've always thought that this kind of looked weird. However, it is what it is. And then I have an aftermarket radio because every radio from the 2000s was pretty garbage. So it has just an aftermarket unit. Then I have some very basic climate control options, where to send it, how hot or cold you want it, and then the fan speed. Very simple here, but I like it. Again, this is really speaking to the driver orientedness. There's not a million climate controls. If it's hot out, put it on cold. If it's cold out, put it on hot, and then get driving. That's the most important part. Then I get the hazard switch and of course the shifter itself. This is the stock shift knob. I actually really like the look of it. And like I said earlier, I love the feel of it. I think this does the shifting job very, very well as I just downshifted here. Let's see if it'll take second. Revved it a little too high, but. Then there's this little dead panel. And I was having a chat with the owner and we realized that that is for the Nismo badge. So if you were to get the Nismo 350Z, your serial number would go right there. Now this is not a Nismo, so I don't get that. Then I do have a little openable sort of cubby sort of thing. So I guess we'll do a big friggin' bottle test. And of course the 350Z fails. I mean, I didn't really expect it to pass since this isn't really even a true cup holder. <laughs> Then I do get a mini center console just for a little bit of extra storage. Then behind the center console, we do have a 12 volt outlet sort of in the bulkhead. And then we have storage compartments behind the seats. Very, very helpful in a coupe like this. They're not huge, but at least you get something there. Now the seats are pretty comfortable. They are kind of aggressive with their higher side bolsters. Very, very sporty for sure. But being a bigger guy, I fit in these sporty seats. I still get to enjoy them, they're comfortable, and yet they do hold me in, which is hard to find, especially like Focus STs or Fiesta STs, Focus RSs, Civic Type Rs, tend to be a little hard for me to fit in being a larger guy. So these are actually kind of a nice change in pace where I can enjoy these sporty seats without feeling crushed. But we don't have any back seats, so let's hop around back, we'll do a rear hatch review, and then we'll talk about the looks. Now the hatch does offer a decent amount of space and it sort of opens up the rear half of the car. This is really, really nice. You're gonna have plenty of storage back here in the 350Z because they're not trying to squeeze back seats back here. And yes, that bar going across the back, that is fixed in place. That comes on all 350Zs. However, it's not that cumbersome. Now we gotta talk about the looks and I love the look of it. First of all, this does have a body kit on it. That's not the stock front or rear bumper. And it also has added side skirts, however, Something that I do want to point out is the hood. You can tell that this is an HR by the hood. It has a sort of extra bulge in it that the previous 350Zs didn't get. Second gear, what can you tell me? Wow. Wowie, wowie, kablowie, zowie, bam. So now let's get my thoughts out on the 350Z HR. What do I think of it? Well, I think it's fantastic. If you can't get your hands on a 350Z Nismo, which I've driven a 350Z Nismo, and honestly, the biggest difference is just the rarity. That car was really, really rare. It had the serial number in the center. Not many people have them still to this day. They're only getting more and more rare, and that's very cool to me. But the actual driving experience is not far off from this year HR. As a matter of fact, nothing I point to is really dramatic enough for me to make a point about. It revs the same, it handles the same, it goes the same, stops the same, feels the same. So if you can't find a Nismo, this is the next best thing, and it is amazing at that. This is a fun, fun car to drive. It's absolutely a blast. It revs the 7500. The HR is definitely something to seek out. There's a huge difference between this and the original 2003, 2004 350Zs that had the DE engines. There's a night and day difference. This feels alive, it feels peppy. The shifting feel is amazing. The size of the car is great. It's a two seater. There's no fake back seats that you think, oh, maybe I can, no, none of that. This car is real, it tells you how it is. No, this thing isn't the fastest thing in the world, but for where I'm sitting, I don't really care. It might be one of the most fun cars in the world. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Tom for letting me take out his 350Z 
HR. This was an amazing experience because I had driven the Nismo and I've driven a DE and the space between those two cars is insane but this this is a good middle ground it's not as expensive as the nismo but offers nearly all of the driving dynamics of the nismo minus the ugly ugly body kit of the nismo i'm sorry but it has to be said so huge thank you to tom for getting me this car to review he's absolutely awesome he's been a big help to the channel and i can't thank him enough but i hope you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to rate the video comment on the video and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.